Hello everybody, how are you all doing today? I hope you're grand. Oh, I'm in the kitchen. I'm going to cook myself something really naughty and really, really lovely today. And it's going to surprise you all a bit probably because it's not one of my quick sticks things and it's not one of my four ingredients things. It's a little bit more convoluted. The whole thing is probably going to take me about two hours. But if you like what I show you, bear in mind that there are chunks of that time when things are just in the oven, doing their own thing, and you can get on with something else. So I think this is a lovely thing to do, say for a Sunday lunch, and then while it's doing its thing, you can get on with doing some cleaning, <laughs> or whatever it is you want to do in the meantime. So I'm going to make a little pie today. Now I was thinking about making it as a wellington. So with a wellington you would have your pastry underneath, put all your ingredients in, almost like a massive sausage, and then braid your pastry over the top. It could be really, really pretty. And I think if I was serving this maybe for, I don't know, something like Christmas or a special occasion, I would certainly do it as a wellington. But it's just a little bit quicker and more straightforward to do it as a pie, so I'm going to do it as a pie. And basically, it is a kale and rice pie. Hmm, that don't sound too great. Trust me, it's lovely. So, before we go any further, I'm going to show you the ingredients. And I think for once, I'm going to try to remember this underneath the video to tag the ingredients because there are more ingredients here today than I normally use. Um, I'm still pretty flexible in terms of weights of this and that. It's, I kind of go by the handful or the cupful or whatever, but I will try to describe that underneath the video properly for anyone who wants to have a go. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the gorgeous ingredients. I really want to get this on the go now because it's going to be tea time before it's ready. Here we go then. As you can see, way more ingredients than I normally use, but they're all pretty basic and mostly it's things from the garden. One of the reasons I'm doing this today, it's a bit of a treat, is that I do ha have or had in the freezer some puff pastry left over from Christmas. If you don't have any puff pastry, I mean, who's got time to make puff pastry, seriously? You can do this with a short crust pastry as well, of course. So a couple of shop-bought things, but otherwise it's a lot of stuff from the garden still. So starting down here, as a base, um, I have a couple of onions, two or three cloves of garlic. Everything starts with these superheroes, surely, doesn't it? And the equivalent of about a couple of peppers. You can see these are, are, are glistening and icy a bit still because they've just come out of the freezer. It's one of those things, my peppers take ages to come along and then they all come along at once, right at the end of summer. So I always just basically chop them up and put them in the freezer. I probably could have done with chopping them a bit smaller, but never mind, I'll enjoy some big chunks. So yes, onions, garlic, peppers, rice. Now I'm going to use about two cups of rice or that's the equivalent of about 300 grams. And today I'm going to use arborio rice, risotto rice, because I happen to have more of it in stock than I do brown rice. Um, but also because it's just so gorgeous and creamy, um, it just makes this pie taste even more, oh, naughty, good, sumptuous for the winter. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but when we get into winter, I just find that I really like this kind of creamy, carby, stodgy. <laughs> it's kind of stodgy, but it's not like shop bought stodgy, so it's fine. So, yes, risotto rice. And then I've got some mixed nuts here. Oh, it's a big handful, maybe about 100 grams. And I'll just pound seven bells out of them, crush them up a load. And just a word on your nuts. I've left mine out to remind me to mention it. I always keep my nuts in the fridge because the oils in them can go rancid if you just leave them in a cupboard. 
if you're lucky enough to have a north facing pantry with marble shelves they'd be okay there but yeah um, even though my kitchen's north facing it does get really warm so they stay in the fridge then I told you this is a bit of a naughty luxury didn't I with this shop bought stuff but the nuts were actually given to me as a gift before Christmas so oh I might just have to have a chill on one of them before it goes in then I've got some mushrooms again it's probably about a cup full or I don't know 100 grams in there they'll get chopped up quite fine other than the star of the show I've got a load of my Cavallo Nero kale I don't actually know how much that is maybe I should wait for you all I've just basically I'm trying to stand far enough away can you see it's just kind of a big bunch now what I'll do with the kale is where the the ribs get thick and tough I'm not very keen on them so I'll take the ribs out chop the rest up and then with the ribs I know some folk like to just nibble on them I personally don't but I'll set them aside and I'll use them to help me to make some stock speaking of which I'm using some powdered stock today purely because I don't have any stock made up I have very very little by way of scrap vegetables to make stock with so I'm always pretty much not always but often 99% of the time I use my powdered stock um, it's uh, it's a uh, the marigold Swiss veg bouillon, reduced salt, perfect. And then last but not least, I'm going to use some dill and a little bit of nutmeg, and then the juice of half a lemon, plus of course the pastry to pop it all into. Oh my goodness! Oh, and I'm going to use a little bit of thyme today as well because I had a little bit of thyme. Ha! Huh. That's something I rarely say. Oh, I've got a little bit of time. I never have time. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, oh, look at the colours. That gorgeous deep green of the Cavallo. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Right, this has got to get cooking right now because I'm Hank Marvin. Okay, first things first, we're going to get the risotto rice on and going. Now, normally when I make a risotto, You've seen I do the technique of adding a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. I'm not going to do that with this. I'm not babysitting it. So what I've got, I've got about a litre of stock. I'm not going to use it all, maybe about 800 mils. Just made myself a little bit more, just in case um, it gets a little bit dry later on. Yeah, I'll keep that much. If you like your risotto rice made with wine, maybe do say 700 mils of stock 100 200 mils of wine i'm not fast in it goes oh it helps if you put the um if you put the ring on doesn't it give that a quick scrudge so that's going to take about 40 minutes or so just looking at the clock that takes zero to half past okay so about 40 minutes or so about 10 minutes from the end, I'm going to use this pan to steam the um, kale in. So have a steamer pan handy. So I'm keeping it all on that one ring because I am going to use another ring to do the onions, peppers, mushrooms, other bits and bobs. So I'm trying to keep it to two rings. So yeah, get your steamer pan ready. Your risotto rice is in, time to chop up and de-rib your kale. This is just the most amazing, beautiful vegetable. Oh, I do love it. You guys don't need to see me chopping the kale. <laughs> so I'll get on with that and we'll come back when it's time to add it. Once I've got my kale chopped, I'll start chopping up all my other stuff too. So my onions, my mushrooms, if you've got fresh peppers, time to chop them. I may, with my frozen ones, because they've been out for about half an hour now, um, I may just try and chop those down slightly smaller, because they're in quite big chunks. So yes, risotto rice goes on, and now we're chopping for England. Okay, so we're about 10 minutes or so off the end of the um, risotto being ready so now is your time to get your garlic your garlic that's not garlic that's kale 
pop your chopped kale on the steamer. If you pop it on top of your rice. <clears throat> and then, oh, let's just shift you back a little bit so you can see. I've just got some oil warming in here. So now it's time to start with the onions and other bits. So, sorry. I've had to move the camera to try and get everything into shot. Um, and I'm all back to front. So yeah, just sweat the onions down in a bit of oil for oh, five or six minutes. And this is weird for me cooking on this ring. I don't often cook on this ring and it's a bit of a bigger ring. So I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on it that it doesn't catch. But yeah, let that sweat down. Sorry, noise. For about five minutes. And like I say, hopefully at this stage, whilst the risotto rice was doing its thing, we've chopped everything up nice and fine. So I did manage to get the peppers chopped up a bit. So I've got the peppers, garlic and thyme all chopped nice and fine, ready to go in. They'll be next. Then I've chopped my mushrooms up fairly fine. Go, go right at the end. And then the only other thing I've got to do now is get me not to bashed. <laughs> so whilst the onion's going to have five minutes to sweat with the lid on i'm going to go and bash some nuts this is such an insanely satisfying job <laughs> it's noisy all oh, that almond is stopping So I'm not doing them too fine because I actually like a bit of a bite from my nuts. Um, I've tried doing them in my nutri bullet, but it, it basically powdered them and I don't want powder. I want, like I said, I want a bit of texture in there. So the nutri bullet is great for things like if I want it really fine, if I'm doing breadcrumbs, if I'm, if I'm making, for instance, like a nut roast, and then, oh sorry, so noisy. And then quite often what I'll do with the nut roast is I'll do about half of my nuts are much, much finer and then half of them like this so they've still got bite. I don't really want to talk about politics but I am imagining a few politicians in here at the minute. <laughs> That's the Brazil nuts, they're really tough. But gorgeous. And they're so good for us. Oh. Yeah, right. I think I'm gonna turn the camera off to finish these off because you oh <laughs> a bit of walnut for me. You don't really need all that noise, do you? So once your onions have sweated down nicely. Lovely. All the smells already are gorgeous. Then pop in your um, chopped up peppers. Actually, looking at them chopped up now, it doesn't look like quite like two, does it? More like one and a half. But yeah, your peppers, garlic, thyme. Give those all a good scrudging in. So we'll give these, oh, three or four minutes. Um, before then finally adding the mushrooms. Lovely colours. Mmm, mmm. The smell of peppers. I'm whizzing way back to summer. Actually, there's something about the peppers and the thyme. They're both such summery smells, aren't they? Whoa, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. I can't wait for summer. And I can't wait to eat this. But wait, I must. Oh, that's looking lovely, yeah. So, it's had a couple of minutes, well, three or four minutes. Time to pop in the mushrooms for that lovely umami. <laughs> Which, <laughs> oh, I can't help but say umami every time. It just makes me think of um, Uvavu, Rick and Bob, and the dove from above. So I'll just let that all steam slash sweat slash fry for another two minutes to oh maybe three or four minutes 
and we're nearly at the stage where we can have a little relax for a minute. How's our kale doing? Oh, beautiful. Oh, how hot. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Mm. Yeah, that went in my mouth. I've actually, um, the risotto has, the, the, the risotto rice has done much more quickly than I was expecting. So I've actually just turned the heat off because I don't want it to catch now. But there's still enough steam in there for it to steam the kale. Yay! Well, we've nearly finished our first little stage. <laughs> just before, oh, I forgot to turn the heat off. Um, a couple of minutes ago, I've chopped the kale in with the mushroom mix just to give it a last little bit of cook because I was losing, there wasn't much steam left. But whack it all into a bowl. Oh, this is where these cast down pans, they're brilliant, but they ain't half heavy. Get all of that into a bowl. And then get your risotto rice. Oh, so creamy and lovely. I feel particularly cat candid today. What's wrong with me? So, lots of banging. Oh, a little bit of it did catch. Never mind. It's not burned, but it's just a little bit stuck. It's weird for me whenever I use these um, steel pans after the cast iron. I kind of forget to keep quite such a close eye on things. And of course, the, these catch much more quickly. Let me just tip you down a little bit. Sorry, gently, gently, gently. Now, the fun begins where you want to, as best you can, get all this lovely stuff combined. And then we can start adding some more flavour and some seasonings. So it's this stage you're going to want to add some salt and pepper as well, whatever is to your taste. I don't, I don't generally care for either, so I generally don't add them. That's fine by me. Now, I'm actually only going to do, whoopsie, a two person pie, but this would be enough for four people. The rest of it, the spare of it, I'm going to set aside and use to stuff a squash. Mm -mm -mm. So, get it all blended a bit and then here's the juice of half our lemon, put that in, a little bit of dill, dill works really beautifully with all the brassicas, I'm going to do a teaspoon, yum yum yum, and then just a little bit of nutmeg, maybe I think half a teaspoon, just do whatever suits your taste. <clears throat> And not forgetting, <laughs> I nearly forgot, the chopped nuts. You can see the difference in texture as I'm pouring, I hope, that some of it's still really quite crunchy. But I love that. Now, get it all melded and welded again. Melded and welded. Oh, I can't wait. Ah, also, I was thinking if you are a veggie rather than vegan, what, what, what would probably work really nicely in this would be the addition of um, a bit of blue cheese. So if you've got a bit of Stilton left over from Christmas, just crumble a bit of that in too. I think Stilton mushrooms and nuts just work beautifully together. Right, now I'm gonna leave this to rest for about 20 minutes, half an hour. I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge. Let's get it covered before it goes in. So you've got half an hour now to go and play, to go and do something else. Whatever you want to do. Go and read a chapter of a book. Read a bit of the Sunday newspapers if you're doing this on a Sunday. Phone a friend. Whatever it is you fancy, go off and do it and then we'll come back and we'll assemble the pie. Yay! Now the fun really starts. Okay, first things first, preheat your oven to 180. 
Um, I've got my pie dish ready. It's just um, sort of shadowish. Like I say, I'm going to make this to serve two. Now that looks like quite a large thing, but I'll probably have it on its own. If I was doing a load of other veg with it, I'd probably have it as a three portion pie. Okay, yes, super lazy, I know. Ready made puff pastry. But like I say, I got this in for Christmas. Wasn't sure what I might be making. Got some in when it was on a bit of an offer and then didn't use it. I'm just going to roll it a little bit more. So let's have a little bit of a scattering of flour. I used to really, really enjoy baking and used to bake a lot. But when I moved into this um, flat, I didn't have a kitchen at all. There was no kitchen here whatsoever. It's one of the reasons I got the flat cheap. And I didn't have a huge amount of money. And unfortunately, the oven I chose is absolutely rubbish. For the top, for the bottom. Um, oh, hello, Jellycopter. Oh, that's close, isn't it? Can you hear that helicopter? Yeah, so um, I didn't have a huge amount of money to spend and the oven I bought, it's, it's absolutely rubbish because, this is where it's really rubbish, where as the temperature fluctuates in the oven, like all ovens do, whenever it starts to drop temperature a little bit, it, um, it turns the grill on to bring the temperature back up, which means everything I've got in the oven, suddenly there's a grill over it with intense heat. It just burns everything. And I've had so many like massive burn fires. I just, I just sort of gave up in the end, which is really sad. But never mind. I do bake from time to time still. I like doing my pies, but what I tend to do is once they go into the oven, I have to put some tin foil over them to stop them burning. Um, and then just take it off at the last minute to help them brown a bit. So like I said, you know, a, a, a pauper's version, more budget version friendly, um, budget friendly version of this would be to do it with um, just a short crust pastry that you make yourself. But let's face it, puff pastry, let's just see the size of that, it's long enough, not wide enough. Puff pastry is such a lovely treat, isn't it? And also, like I was saying, this is certainly not something I would knock up after a day in the garden. It's definitely something that's more of a, a treat for lunch if friends are visiting, family. A treat just for me, if I like. Uh, because it is taking a little while. Right, out of the fridge comes the filling. Oh, it's still pretty warm. Right, let's get organised on this bench. There we go. Oh, yum, 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 yum. I'm at that stage, as I always am, when I just want to scoff. Oh, get that in there. Yum scrum diddly yum. The smells are lovely. That, the sort of the lemon juice, the thyme, they're all giving it a lovely sort of really fresh, yummy kick. Mm, the smell of the mushrooms. Yum, absolutely pack it in. Go on, stuff it in. So you see what I was saying earlier on about making this into a Wellington. If you had um, if you had your pastry on the counter, I'll try and show you that way. Then if you cut strips sideways, then you can sort of braid it over, braid it all the way along, and then just put that whole thing into the oven. I'm gonna try and get a little bit more stuffing in there. And like I said, the rest of this filling, stuffing, whatever you want to call it, will be really, really lovely in a squash tomorrow. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, pack it in. Mmm, lovely. Excuse me, I'm licking my fingers but it's only me that's going to eat this so I don't care. And then let's pop our little lid on. Just 
give it a good pinch all the way around make sure it's gonna stay on and again if you were doing this for friends for or family for a nice lunch you'd want to crimp your edges a bit smarter than how I'm doing mine wouldn't you you could go around with a fork like my nan used to I give it a little fork do you remember all our nans used to do that didn't they around the edge to hold it together little fork <laughs> oh my goodness I haven't done a little forky one for years how rubbish looking is that but I don't care I just want to get it I'm going to leave my little bit as bits of excess on because oh no they're too tatty aren't they I was going to leave do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to cut them off and I'm going to make some little balls with some of the leftover Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yum scrum diddly. Is that oven up to temperature yet? Let's have a look. Not quite. And the other thing that does my nut with this oven is it takes so long to get up to temperature. Never mind. I'm not in a hurry to do anything else today. Whilst I was just letting the mixture rest in the fridge, I got stuck into the washing up. Um, so yeah, no hurry. Take my time. Enjoy it. Just a few little steam holes in the top. Scrummy. Oh, I know. Let's give it a little wash with oil. So I don't eat eggs. Um, and normally you would do your wash with eggs. But just to give it a little bit of golden. Like I said, this is this is plenty for two people if you were just having the pie and nothing else. But if you were serving it with a load of other veggies as well, then you could probably actually I think you could probably stretch this to four people. There we go. That'll do. Right, how's that oven doing? Right time to go in. Yay! I will see you all in about 40 minutes, four zero minutes, with a hopefully baked pie that I can stuff my face into. It smells like it's had enough time. Come on. Mmm. Oh, yes. Hold on a sec, let's get this door closed, it's nice shiny. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to get my gnashes around this. Right then, let's see if I can get it out in even a remotely elegant way. I think maybe a quarter for now. Mm -hmm. It's always the first bit of the pie that's tricky to get out, isn't it? <laughs> Whoever gets the first bit always ends up with the with the mess. Oh, look at that! Yum, 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 yum! Oh my goodness, guys! I can't tell you how excited I am to just start eating. Oh, come on! Oh, fingers will do. Oh, 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 oh. Yum, scrum. Okay, let me just show you this before I start mullering it. Isn't that inviting? Isn't that a sight to comfort in the middle of winter? Oh yes. Right, I'm gonna tip you up and have a little taste with you. Oh, ouch, with you all. And then I've got a feeling <laughs> I'm gonna be packing you all off to disappear somewhere else whilst I tuck in. Oh, just, you know, a little bit of pastry in the winter oh, goes a long way, doesn't it? 
<laughs> Come on, get it in, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One more mouthful and I'll talk to you again. Mmm. gorgeous sorry excuse me it's really really yummy look it's a bit of time and effort and like I said it's not the sort of thing that I would make the minute I get in from the garden but actually um, you can make all of this up to the point where you put the pie together and the pastry and then freeze them as individual pies in the freezer much exactly well exactly like I do with my cabbage pie um, and then from frozen, give it, I would say, probably 45, 50 minutes. But it's so lovely and comforting. It's got some really lovely, delicate flavours in. Experiment for yourself. You may want to put a little bit more of this in, a little bit less of that in. But it's just that lovely kind of... There's something almost autumnal about it. Maybe that's the mushrooms, I'm not sure. But the the that really dark taste of the kale that lovely umami of the mushrooms but it's all balanced by the gorgeous kind of creaminess of the rice and then that lovely light zingy pop from the lemon you get a little bit of the thyme and the dill and the nutmeg coming through oh yummy and then of course the occasional crunch on one of the nuts i've left a little bit bigger it's so lovely it's honestly i'm gonna have no mouthful Mm. but not it's really easy it's just a little bit time consuming but again it's one of those things maybe you know maybe you could well as you saw I made up enough so that I can have stuffed squash for the next few days I would say those quantities let's I'm just going to show you the the pie dish again where I've cut into it because actually I think most of you would probably think that would serve four. So if you think with those quantities, you could make it to make a pie to serve now for four, and then you could either make four individual pies from the leftovers, or one other big pie to put in the freezer. But either way, that's kind of, that's pretty much eight portions of food. And although the first chunk of the recipe you kind of, chopping, chopping, chopping while the risotto rice is on. For the most part, it's a kind of put it in the oven and walk away. You can get on with something else, like the washing up. So give it a go. Oh, while we're still in the middle of winter, while we're still appreciating our gorgeous kale. I've just got to have one more mouthful. I'm so sorry. It's so rude to eat when you can't. Mm. 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 Each mouthful, you notice know, different little tastes and flavours. Yeah, um, make the most of our gorgeous winter veggies now. <laughs> Sorry, still chewing. You could substitute the kale with cabbage. Um, I wouldn't say the the broccoli. I know a few people are starting to get their sprouting broccoli coming through, but I think it would disintegrate too much. But definitely cabbage, or maybe your broccoli leaves, your sprout tops. Any of the other quite sturdy green leaves you've got now, chuck them in this and make the most of them. Oh, do you know that risotto rice though? That really is, that really is a treat and a comfort. I would normally make this with just brown rice, but I have to say, mm, the risotto rice, what a treat. Mm, 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 mm. I'm so sorry, I'm being really rude now. I must stop. <laughs> Look. I need to eat so I'm going to say cheerio to all for now have a little rummage in your garden see what greens you've got still growing have a look in your shed to see what sort of onions and bits and pieces you've got still stored have a look in your freezer to see if you've got some peppers this that and the other maybe you were lucky enough to forage some mushrooms in the autumn and you dehydrated them so now's a chance to rehydrate them chop them up and get them into a 
gorgeous, gorgeous pie. All right, my lovelies, I'm going to say a proper cheerio to you all now so that I can go away and eat this mm, without worrying about being rude. So I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, have fun in your kitchens. I know a lot of you can't get outside at all at the moment because of the freezing temperatures. If you can't, tuck yourself up indoors and have fun in the kitchen. Bye for now, everybody, and take care of yourselves.